Hello friends and enemies, it's me as well here with your Romance Landia Monthly. Um, so much happened this month. We're gonna lay that out right now. So much happened. So, there are things I took out because like it just, some of it was cyclical conversations that happened. Some of it I will talk about a little bit here and I think we might do a longer discussion video on perhaps. I just, like too much happened y'all, too, too much happened for it to be uh 26 days into january as i'm filming this and i'm honestly terrified by the time this comes out on sunday like i'm literally terrified of how much is going to happen between me filming and posting this video terrified y'all i have i yeah as always i'll have timestamps for each item and links to everything i can link to info wise and we're just gonna start it off with the one that kicked the year off with a freaking bang and that is that an author a small indie author faked her death a few years ago it was like 2020 i think and her family told everyone she died and now she's come back to life she had another pen name that she was writing under before she admitted to who she was and on that pen name took over the fan group for her old author name and then came out this year as having faked her death this made the rolling stones y'all i cannot make this up this author is susan meachin something like that meacham i um the main reason I wanted to mention this also is that like there's some fake screenshots going around uh, that potentially are not true of her saying like she did it on purpose to get attention. I don't know. Supposedly she was admitted to the um, mental health hospital potentially before this and had like she had a good old fashioned mental breakdown. Um, I don't know and that's info I don't think we're ever really gonna have they're not she's th this author is not commenting when reached out to by reporters so I think the worst part here honestly is the fact that like there was a GoFundMe um authors that were friends with her were devastated obviously rightfully so and we later come to find out like two years later that this was not real that this was faked and I don't know that it netted her the attention she wanted at the end of the day or netted her any sales. I never had heard of her before this and I never planned to pick up a book by her either because that's weird. This is just weird. Like this is very like live journal behavior. We're going to call it. I feel like those of us that were around then get it. And maybe Tumblr ask too. Why? Why? I just, I don't understand. And then like taking over your group from your other pen name, like your new pen name, is just the, the weirdest thing ever. But <laughs> it just was kind of wild to watch this unfold and then see like Romance Landia in the Rolling Stones and all these other places where, you know, this is being talked about because this was chaos. All right, so next we're going to talk about the HarperCollins Union situation, what's going on with the strike. So first of all, we are like day 56, I think. I did not write it down when I'm filming this. So there's that uh, of the strike. They are finally coming to the bargaining table with HarperCollins. So that's really exciting. But there was a piece of information that we had previously that HarperCollins Union did not include Harlequin and Karina Press, um, which is a Harlequin imprint. But it has come to light that it does include that. So just so you know, moving forward, your best options here are to donate to the strike fund. Don't cross the picket line. You can still buy titles from HarperCollins, but do not review them, provide blurbs, etc. You'll notice on my channel, I basically said, I read this. That's it. I haven't read a ton. Honestly, there were things I went to pick up off my shelf for this month that I didn't read because they're HarperCollins. So I'm, I'm hopeful to say the least that we're moving forward. And on that note, I did want to talk about a new HarperCollins author, Tessa Bailey. Not new, but they picked up print rights and like distribution rights for all of her formerly independent books, like her self-pubbed titles, because, and I quote, she said that it was hard to find her books in store. And I just, listen, Tessa has been getting shit lately, okay? And it's disappointing. I never like seeing an author I've previously enjoyed get into shit, but she just like can't help herself I feel like at times and this one just cracked me up because like we were in the middle we're in the middle of the strike she announces on her Instagram about how her all of her titles are going to be available via um bookstores now because of HarperCollins but like I literally have seen Tessa Bailey's self-published works in Barnes and Nobles and other bookstores with no issue so I don't really know how hard it ever was to access a Tessa Bailey book in the last like year and a half two years so she says that and then everyone's like, what the fuck? 
the strike. And she did come out and say, like, she supports the strike, blah, blah, blah. So, like, that's nice. But I just think it's weird slash not surprising to, again, watch her kind of, like, misstep in a way. Because I feel like she just cannot for the life of her get it together. Um, and again, I just am very, like, thrown at the idea that she thinks her self-published books are hard to find. I, I don't know. Y'all tell me differently, but I swear I see them everywhere constantly. <laughs> so I just, I want to know, like, are they y'all? Like, or is it just me being like, how, how, how? Because that's how I feel. But, um, you know, I'm sure they gave her a bunch of money that, you know, they're not, they're not paying to the strike people, people on strike because that's too much money, but we'll pay Tessa Bailey a bunch of money to have rights to her books. Um, on more publishing news, this, this is a thing that luckily, like, got canceled very quickly-ish, but Colleen Hoover's, uh, publisher, Atria Books or whatever, announced, and it ends with us coloring book. And I cringed. I just, I, I like did a double take. I didn't, first of all, I did not believe it when I first saw it. I was like, this isn't real. No, 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 it was real. And it was absolutely wild to see Colleen Hoover fans turn on Colleen Hoover in the comments because they were not happy. They're like, why would you make a coloring book of this book? This book, it ends with us if you're unfamiliar, is heavily themed around domestic violence, not just from her current partner, but also from like when she was a teen and her dad to her mom. So like, I just, what are we coloring here? What are we calling? I, I just, I want to know what was inside that book. Like, I know it's, can't, I would just, I would like, can we, can we get some leaked pages? I'm curious. Like, what were we coloring? Because it, I'm just, I'm, I'm really truly unsure as a person what we would be coloring in a book, a coloring book based on a book that is heavily themed around domestic violence. Because is it all floral arrangements since she owns the flower shop? Like, what, what are we coloring? So that's my question. They did cancel the book. They apologized. I don't know. I feel like this, like, ties into my prediction for 2023, which is that the we will see the downfall of Colleen Hoover. So I feel like this is, like, one tick in that direction. <laughs> then we had a book that went to auction. So if you're unfamiliar, sometimes book titles go to auction for the different publisher houses to buy on the highest bidder wins. Well, this is a book called Everything's Fine that's out June 6th. And we have another though not pol completely politically based romance, still a uh, liberal and conservative romance that it's being billed as. It's called Everything's Fine. This is one where I don't feel okay fully discussing it because I, as a white woman, do not have the language or ability to reflect on the interracial romance in this and the fact that it is written by a black woman. There is an amazing TikToker called Satray Reads. I will link to her down below. She read the book. She talks about the issues in the book uh, really well, uh, covering why it's a problem in a way that's accessible to everyone and also just kind of like how weird this book is. It was wild. It was absolutely wild to watch her read this and I appreciate her taking one for the team. Uh, but yeah, this is just like, I want to know why. Like, why do we keep keep having these. Like, I don't understand why we keep having these. Why is this a thing that they want to publish so badly? I don't, I just don't understand. Like, there is no sex appeal to me in these books. There's no, in, like, there's nothing that can make me pick up one of these books unless I'm reading it to shit all over it. Like, there's just nothing in me that wants to pick these up. So, just to FYI if you see it, because that cover to me does not indicate what it is inside. Um, but yeah, the back is all about how she's a liberal, he's a conservative. They both misunderstand each other. Just gag me with a spoon. Uh, all right, next we have racism. Because is it a romance landia if we don't have racism? Y'all, I'm not joking, this month was so much. So there was this like book event called the Land of Dreams Ball that got into some trouble because they sent, well, one, they called someone's husband the N-word, uh, which is not appropriate at all. I don't understand as a business entity doing this. And that person spoke out about it. Well, the Land of Dreams Ball slash Divinity Ball, because they rebranded to make sure they could escape the call outs, <laughs> sent a cease and desist with a bunch of people on it that were not informed of this cease and desist being sent to this creator. And this just like created this snowball effect happening of people dropping out of the ball, unable to get their money back. I think the ball has officially been canceled now. It's really hard to find any information on it outside of TikTok because of the fact that like they're obviously just trying to like cover their asses right now. And I just want to note, like, 
you don't always know who you're supporting when it comes to these things, right? And you can't always know that a creator is a bad person or that somebody has bad intentions or is racist behind closed doors, etc. But like, the idea to me that they were like, oh no, we're being called out, let's change our name. So nobody knows, it's just so sketchy. And like some authors I saw were like, I'm burned on author events. I don't think I ever wanna to go to one now. And I'm like, that sucks. Like no author, it just sucks. And like originally I know there was some call outs on their lack of diversity and they're like, well, it's not our fault if diverse authors don't apply to attend. And I'm like, mm, but are you reaching out? <laughs> Because I look at like Steamy Lit Con and like they're doing great work of reaching out to a lot of diverse authors and I'm so pumped to attend because there's going to be so many amazing authors there. Like it's just, it's going to be a fun time. Whereas this is just like a total mess. But yeah, I don't know. Just look at who's attending events. And if you don't see authors of color, maybe second guess it a little because I, it makes me question things a lot. Okay, next we have two authors. Uh, one bad, one, eh? We're gonna call it, eh, you know, it's, it is what it is. I don't know how I feel about it. So first up, Red Phoenix, uh, recently got called out for her book that got rewritten recently. Uh, and this is her like Brie submission series. I'll put the cover here. In the first book, this is, she published this in like 2014 or something. Either way, it's, it's been, it's been reworked since then. And she quite literally still has our main female character, Brie, afraid of the black dom that is part of the school. Uh, and also says like some really weird things about him. I was really uncomfortable, y'all. Like I was just like, ooh, this is uncomfortable to hear. I read this book a long time ago. I don't, re like I mean a long time ago, like when it first came out. So I don't remember a lot about it, but yikes. Uh, and then there also is a Korean man who is a dom in the series at Shabari, and he is described as slanted eyed and all these things that I just also, again, cringe, just weird, weird descriptions, weird, just some weirdness here. And I think it's extra weird to rework a book and then leave this stuff in. Like, it's just really weird to me. I will link to a review on Goodreads that has a great breakdown of some of the issues in this book. I also will link to the TikTok that alerted me to this. But yeah, I just was like, hmm, disappointing. I just, I wish when authors are like, oh, I fucked up, let me fix it, which is what we're going to talk about next a little bit, um, you know, that they did actually fix it versus like still leaving the problem item there. So next we have Mile High by Liz Tomford. So this book was getting some criticism on BookTok because uh, it is a black, a black romance written by white authors, which I guess a, a romance with black characters written by white, I don't know. Like I feel weird calling it a black romance because like I feel like that should only be written by black people. But uh, that's my opinion. Um, I'm not really aware of this, this author. I've seen some of her series, I think. I think they're all hockey books. But she was getting critiqued for this. Valid. So she did come make a response video and I think she took after H.G. Carlton. I'll show y'all her response video right here. Hold on. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop on because I know there's a couple of different discourses happening right now. Um, one of them is that Xanders and Stevie are both characters of color and um, in Mile High. And obviously I'm a white woman and I wrote that book. Um, Xanders was a side character in a different book I had written where both main characters were white. And so I knew when it was time for Xanders to get his own book, um, because he was going to be my first character of color, that I just needed to have a ton of research being done um, to be sure I'm telling that story as lovingly and as respectfully as possible, and also not sharing experiences that aren't mine to speak on. Um, so I have ha I had sensitivity re readers for that book as well and I have two more going through it right now just to make sure there's nothing I missed um, and if there is that'll be edited immediately um, and then the other conversation is about Xander's and Stevie's races changing from Wattpad to published version and I just wanted to um, throw a couple edits up a um, couple that I had made that were on my Wattpad book and then a couple that readers had made after the Wattpad they read the Wattpad version. Um, so you'll see those there. The Wattpad version was up about a year ago and the published version, I published it seven months ago. Um, but nothing about their races have changed. Um, the Wattpad version, yes, was my first draft. Um, and there's things that have changed as far as dialogue and cleaning up and that kind of a thing. 
um, and I probably got more consistent with my de my description of them. But as far as their races, those have stayed the same the entire time. Um, so yeah. Oh, and then somebody had messaged me and asked if the guy on the Wattpad cover was a white man. His name's Jalen Noble. He is not a white man. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up. Um, okay, thanks. Okay, so I just want to note, like, the reason I'm highlighting this is that I think, uh, once again, not my apology to accept, not anyone's to accept or critique if you are not black, but I think it's really interesting to see authors taking note of how to respond to things currently, because in one camp, we have authors who just scream at reviewers and hate us and want nothing to do with us, basically, if we don't love their book or them. And then you have authors like this who are like, hey, I'm listening. I hear your criticism. These are the things I originally did. Like she talks about having sensitivity readers and she's having them go through it again. People in the comments pointed out some stuff. She was like, I'm going to fix that. Absolutely. You know, she's stressed trying not to put in experiences that aren't her own to speak about. Again, good points to be making. I personally like don't love reading white authors writing non-white characters all the time. But I also understand that these were side characters people loved and, you know, she had two choices, write the book or say, hey, I'm not comfortable writing this book because they're not white characters and I can't properly portray them or something. Or again, flat out, I had sensitivity readers. I did a lot of things. I think about how Kennedy Ryan approaches her books and she often talks about how many sensitivity readers and people go through these books for her to make sure she's not doing harm. I think about that like with Longshot and stuff like she's talked heavily about that. I mostly wanted to spotlight this because I felt like it was another example of a good way of handling something without literally like pointing blame and yelling at people which is often the response we see these days next uh we're gonna move into arcs because that just feels relevant right now we just talked about authors let's talk about arcs so there's a big discourse mix on tiktok right now about arcs and arc teams slash street teams slash what you can and cannot require of a reviewer <sighs> and i got news y'all Amazon has terms and conditions if you are requesting reviewers to review there. If you're going to require your review team to do certain things, that's fine. And I think you can remove people for not making reviews in time, etc. on your review team. I think that makes sense. It's perfectly valid. Again, makes sense. But we also have to note that Amazon has terms and conditions that will rip your author account away from you if you are not doing things that they say you have to do. One of those is that you cannot require reviewers to leave a review or a positive review. I do think it's pretty normal and valid to say don't leave anything less than a four star review for the first week and a half, week, two weeks. That's fine. I get that. That's valid. Reviewers also aren't beta readers here to like critique and shape your story. But also I think it's fair to have a street team as we'll call it, which are people who should be helping you make content and you know, promote your book, right? And I think those are two different entities that authors need to separate a little bit more. Because I often, I know, I'm hesitant to be on review teams for some newer authors and things. I try to be pretty critical about whose review team I am on. I honestly am only on one actively right now, and that's Anna Wong's. And I am on a couple other indie ones, but I don't always get their books. Sometimes I do. And I think authors can make the choice also to be slightly involved and see what their reviews are from their review team or completely remove themselves. I think both sides of this are fine as long as they're not actively attacking a reviewer for not liking one of their books. That's that's where the line is. Um, and this is something where like, I kinda might do a deep dive if y'all are interested in like the differences and about like Amazon terms and conditions. But like literally, I will link to the video down there. I don't wanna insert like five TikToks. This one creator went into detail on what will get your Amazon KDP account taken away, which is your author account. And one of those things specifically is forcing reviewers to leave positive reviews or requiring them to leave a review. So yeah, I just, I, again, I think it's something we could do like a whole discussion about, about like reviews and what's required of you as a reviewer and all these things. But I just think, again, <laughs> sometimes I feel like authors just don't want us to read their books, even though they're putting it out to the public to be read. So that's always interesting. I want to give a big big content warning right now before I go into this part of the video. Uh, we are about to talk about cancer, so know that going forward, like, just know that. Um, two big things have happened this month already in this front. So I wanted to talk about Grace Draven, um, 
her editor recently shared uh, that she is going through cancer treatments. She has a GoFundMe set up because writing is her family's main source of income. It has raised a lot of money, so do not feel pressure to donate. But I just think it's important people know this because obviously she's not going to be able to write the same way she was while she's going through treatment. But I wish her the best and I hope it's an as easy as it can be uh, treatment and recovery. And then uh, on cancer note as well, we lost Lorelai Brown slash Katie Porter this month. Katie Porter wrote some really fun, filthy books. So, she wrote, so Katie Porter wrote a series that I've like been dying to read and I need to get to and it's called The Vegas Top Guns and it's basically like a whole bunch of Air Force pilots and different kinks. They're supposed to be really filthy and absolutely delightful so I'm really excited to read them. Uh, but it's just absolutely so sad to see uh, this back to back. Like I literally saw both of these things in my feed very quickly and I just was like, oh. But yeah, I just wanted everyone to know and if you haven't read a Katie Porter or a Lorelai Brown book, maybe pick one up just for the hell of it because uh, we're not gonna get any more, unfortunately. But it's just really sad to see Romance Landia lose somebody. I feel like we haven't in a while, at least someone that I've known um, in a while, so, or known of in a while, haven't lost, so yeah, it's just really sad. So on that note, we're gonna close the video out. That's all I have for this month's Romance Landia. I know it's a slightly longer one, but not too long, probably by the time I edit this down. <sighs> like I said, I had to cut things, y'all. <laughs> I, we had some of the cyclical discourse happening, you know, like self-published books suck, etc. cetera. Um, just weird. Some people are weird. And I just felt like, let's, let's, let's just not, <laughs> let's just not. If you made it this far in this video, you can leave me a fruit emoji of your choice. And if you don't want to do that, let me know something you did this month that you were really excited about, because I would love some positivity in the comments, because I just feel like that was such a sad note to end on, and I'm sorry. Uh, I will have links to everything I can link to in the description box, as well as links to be my friend anywhere on the internet and if you aren't aware if you are a member you do get romance landia early and ahead of time so if you are interested in that that's down below for a dollar 99 a month you can join and get uh romance landia early access so yeah all right y'all i will be back in a few days to talk to you about books and things and i will see you then bye already packing come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away To a place where we don't know About to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get